Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ancient Assyrian Props and Costumes. I'm Donald Barco, and today we'll be talking about Ancient Assyrian Sword and Dagger Hills. Choke the grip. See how you got three fingers for this space. You got the the swell in the middle that fits into the palm of your hands, especially when you choke in a club club grip the the hilt. And because you're far away from the pommel. It's easy to swing, nothing's affected around your wrist. And we see this type of grip in ancient Assyrian reliefs. So club grip, choking the, the guard quite, quite up high. Sometimes we even see grips like this. And also, you've got grips like this. But you notice how you either got four fingers around here, or you got four fingers from up there, and that's really good when it locks the pinky in. It's awesome. You're right. You're right at the end of your hilt, so you're getting as much leverage as possible. You can you can put your hand in a uh, or your thumb in on top. However, that is a bit insecure. Uh, just grab it around like a club grip. Beautiful. Especially when you thrust, what happens is that little pinky is locked in that in that area there, so that if your sword gets stuck, you're pulling it out. You got no problems. It's not it's not going to slip out of your hands, especially with the the swell and then the the ribs. So there's quite a few different places you can actually grip onto this. Uh, double line headed uh, hilted handle which is very common on ancient Assyrian reliefs especially amongst the nobles, the kings, the princes and some of the best warriors too handle styled of Ashurbanipal's hunting line hunting reliefs we see one two three four ribs along the handle there's an area for your pinky uh, before you get the swell of the pommel and here the guard you can see that the final rib is where you where you can go to get your pinky all the way up against and sometimes you even see Ashurbanipal holding it again uh, all the way where your pinky is on this one and uh, his thumb is across the face of the actual guard and you can see there's a space you see the last rib and then the space of the actual 
uh, pommel. So here again, you got the choice, four at the back or four at the front. You want to choke your grip, uh, your guard, or you want to choke the, the end of the pommel, uh, either way. And because it's sort of like a diamond cross section here, it's uh, comfortable, especially in the palm of the hand when you grip it towards the back. So there's no, uh, there's no biting. It doesn't bite your hand, this particular style of guard. Uh, so you can, you can put your thumb across. I think that's a bit dangerous. You're asking for it to get chopped off, especially when you have such a small guard. Uh, going, going down across, I think. Is pretty good. What's uh, surprising is when I uh, I gave this sword to be used by my cousin, uh, his instincts straight away were were to club lock it, to choke to choke the the actual neck of the gun, which was quite surprising. You know, I've even got a photo of it where he's in the chariot, and uh, I'm I'm with my sickle sword and shield and I'm versing him and I never told him exactly how to hold it it just came naturally to him and the funny thing is that same grip that he uses from the chariot is the same one that Ashurbanipal uses when he's uh, hunting lions stabbing stabbing a lion that's pouncing from the back of the chariot so that was quite interesting especially from someone who has very little sword sword fighting experience as well Get a, get a glimpse of the actual hilt. Nice, it's a very, very smooth, doesn't bite. I'm really, I really like a, a handle. Those ribs really help uh, with your edge alignment and they lock in. And of course, I made it so that it would sit really nice to my to my fingers. So, see see how there's a lot of space. The good thing about having having this is it's also beautiful for an ice pick grip as well. So you can ice pick it. You can ice pick it all the way to choke the guard. Or you can go up against the hilt hard. Very comfy. I find this a very ergonomic uh, style of handle. Very feels very good in the in the hand. Yeah, see, this, this maneuver that I love doing so much, which goes over your head, in order for you to get just a little bit more leverage 
has to be done on such an acute angle that you lose most of your most of your leverage, your power, uh, which is a shame because I really love this maneuver. Uh, you kind of that's why you see me do do this a lot to miss to miss the point of my helmet, which. Uh, See? Okay, so that works as well, but yeah. Now the thing is this particular blade is taller or longer than what has been found in archaeological records concerning ancient Assyrian swords and daggers so of course this would be a short sword for ancient Assyrian times this would be a long sword imagine uh, so yeah it's just frustrating because you can practice as much as you want doing doing these maneuvers But as soon as I tilt my head forward, I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna knock my helmet. So that's quite annoying. Which is a shame, because uh, I mean you can only imagine after a while in battle, your your neck muscles when they're tense, you'll start to fatigue. So that's why you should be as loose as possible, or especially around the neck. But, my point is Here is your hilt, small guard section, hand, and then the pommel. So pommel, grip, uh, sorry, guard, grip, and pommel. The, the thing about this is, I got inspiration from one sword and another, and then tried to give my own uh, rendition of a uh, Assyrian hill to go. Uh, it's pretty comfy. The, the thing is, after a long period of time though, because there's only enough space for you to grab, your hand is pretty much jammed in between here and in between there. And because this is that, that there is almost like a 90 degree, a little bit less, but you get, you get what I'm saying. So your, <coughs> the end of your uh, wrist is hard up against that pommel end. So eventually uh, it will start to bite, but it does take a while. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with this. You can opt to leave, to leave your pinky free and place that the half round in, in your pommel and Uh, have more have more leverage puts more force on the on the wrist though uh, uh, yeah and another thing I would do is instead of having it uh, pretty square uh, what I would do is I would uh, make it make the diamond so that 
the top edge. So, so if this was my edge alignment, that would be that would be perfect for my for my grip. Uh, but you can see my sword is tilted on an angle because because this is flat. So this flat edge is in line with with that. So what you would want to do is shave on this side more and this side and the bottom edge and the one on the other side to give you more of a diamond profile so that when it locks into your hand uh, you've got perfect edge alignment the whole time your hand is in the sword. sword or dagger. Uh, so here is uh, something that's much more uh, to scale in regards to ancient Assyrian swords. Uh, the historians are qualifying this one as something of a dirk size, uh, double edged. It's got ribs down the, down the center, reinforcing. Uh, here are the type of the type of handle is something that has the actual wooden pieces pinned on. So you can see there's one, two and three uh, pins that I've, that I've hammered. And what I'd uh, like to show you is how it fits nice and snug in a one-handed grip. And that thinned out area around, around the uh, the neck of the guard allows you to, to really choke, get a really good grip and the flared edges as well really lock lock the pinky in if you if you want to hold it in this direction and you also have the added the added choice to very comfortably wield it in an ice pick grip. And uh, here something that's a Babylonian sword 